So going to the football first, Tony Weapons in the studio. Tony, uh, big wins for the top three today. Uh, Corinthians maintaining their lead at the top of the table on goal difference, a thumping 7-2 victory against uh, Douglas Royal in the Battle of Bala Fletcher. It was, and uh, a nice touch as well today because um, people remember it. a year ago, Jamie Carr passed away, a Douglas Royal player, and uh, Jamie would have been 32 yesterday, and I believe uh, before kickoff uh, on Douglas Royal's pitch, um, there were 32 blue uh, balloons uh, sent off, uh, which is a nice touch, and uh, also Corinthians um, presented a wreath as well, so um, really nice to see uh, that being done. But uh, the way it started in the match, wow, it was uh, Corinthians who uh, took the lead, uh, Stephen Whitley with the first, and then uh, Douglas Royal equalised, haven't got their goal scorer. And then uh, Corinthians, I think, um, took a 2-1 lead, and I think um, Douglas Royal might have equalised, not 100% sure on that one, but uh, Corinthians were definitely 3-2 up at uh, half-time. And then uh, in the second half, they played some really good football. Sean Doyle with a hat-trick. I think one of them uh, was a penalty. Danny Gerrard got a goal. Sam Black, who's uh, back from uh, the States at the moment. And uh, Dan Simpson with, with a goal as well. So great performance by Corinthians in the end. Bit of a sticky start for them, but got it right. And uh, Douglas Royal, after two great results, couldn't find anything today. And uh, unfortunately, we're beaten comfortably. Peel. Uh, kept pace with Corinthians. They are also on 28 points after 12 matches, although their uh, goal difference is uh, five worse. They won 6 0 away against Laxey. It's the second half performance here. Yeah, uh, snagger, isn't five it? goals in the second yeah, half let's, appeal. Let's have a look at uh, Laxey's team first. Uh, seven of the players today were under 18 uh, years of age, so it just shows that uh, the future bodes well for them. But uh, today, and as we've seen over the last uh, two or three games, uh, Peel absolutely flying in front of goal. Uh, Matthew Skillicorn, he got a couple of goals. Lee Gale got two, one from the penalty spot. Sean Kelly got his name on the score sheet once again, and it doesn't help when you score an own goal. So a comfortable victory for uh, Peel, and it keeps the pressure on the, the team at the top at the moment, and that's Corinthians. Also keeping pressure on the teams at the top were St George's. Now, things looked a little sticky for them at uh, half-time today because mm. it was three all, and I think after the last two weeks when they have dropped points... Uh, we were wondering if another upset was on the cards. And then uh, there was a sending off and uh, Geordie's pulled away. They did pull away, but uh, the way it went, uh, it, so Georges didn't play well in the first half, uh, but the scoreline was 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Furrow Davies um, scored a, a good goal, really good finish after uh, Jay uh, Maxwell scored one. And it was uh, a good effort. And it, I just thought Sir Georges would build from this, but then Stephen Priestnell, uh, made it 1-1 uh, then uh, Jordan Corley uh, gave St Mary's a lead 2-1 uh, then an equaliser came in for uh, St George's and then Alex Harrison with a, a header uh, made it 3-2 uh, and then uh, St George's uh, got it back to 3-3 so everything to play for in the second half but then um, you know it's just one of those uh, St George's was still not quite at it and uh, St Mary's were, were doing OK, so they sat comfortable. But the turning point was the sending off of James Murphy. And I don't know why St Mary's had any complaints with it, because it was second booking. He kicked the ball away, clear as day, card, see you later, you know, red card, and that's it, job done. And he's cost his team, because he was there, he was working hard in midfield, keeping things closed down, but suddenly St Mary's start to run out of steam, and St George's played like they have over the last uh, 10 years plus. And um, Carl Clark got an own goal, Frank Jones with a belter, great strike, and Frank will probably be the first to admit he didn't play particularly well in the first half, but in the second half he worked well. And then uh, Kieran McNulty uh, got a goal as well, and the game was actually abandoned um, with seven minutes to go. Serious injury to Joey Morland, it looks like a broken leg, left leg, and the rules are quite clear now with the FA, the, the score will stand, and uh, it'll go down as a 6-3 result for St George's. Uh, speedy recovery for Joey uh, because uh, it did look uh, nasty. The ambulance was on the pitch and the game was stopped for a good 10, 15 minutes and there was no choice but to abandon it. Everyone was cold and I think everyone was just uh, worried uh, for uh, Joey. But uh, well done to Kiri Jockin, who's a physio down there, who was, had everything under control. Takes the worry away until the ambulance came down and then once the medical staff were there and uh, made them as comfortable as they could. And um, if you listen to Joey, I don't think you will be. Uh, but certainly to his family, a speedy recovery from everyone involved in Manx football. Here, here. Now, in fourth place, Russian United, they uh, lost today at home to uh, St John's, who started the day in sixth. St John's have now pulled level on points with Russian and uh, sit in fifth place 
although we do have uh, an inferior goal difference. Yeah, so, thanks to uh, Dave Farragut for keeping me posted on this one. Uh, St John's took the lead. I think it was uh, Reese Oates and one nil it was at half time. I don't know if Russian equalised, but Stevie Ryden got that goal. Uh, but uh, Harry Rothwell, by the sound of it, is the star because he got the winning goal. Great result. And when you look at uh, St John's recently, they do with um, St George's 3-3. And now, you know, another team that's expected to push at the top of the table to beat them. You know, St John's are getting themselves back on track. And uh, when we see the combination uh, score later on as well, it does look as if they're getting a few players back as well. So it's looking good for them. Douglas Athletic went down 2-1 to Old Boys at home. Yeah, Darren Hudson with the first one, nil it was at half time to uh, Douglas High School Old Boys. And then I think they got the second one to uh, give them that little bit of a freedom to play because at 2 0, you think you're going to win this one. But Douglas Athletic uh, did get a goal back by Martin Cowan. So it worried the Old Boys a little bit. They managed to hang in there and uh, get the three points, and they'll be happy with that one. And finally, in the Canada Life Premier League today, it was the bottom two facing each other, and it finished 2 yeah. 2. I don't think this has helped either side out, to be honest with you, because um, I think both wanted three points. 1-1 uh, at half-time, 2-2 two, two at the end. Nick White got the two goals for Ramsey, not too sure who got the goals for Colby. And that means that Colby pulled level on points uh, with Douglas Royal, though, though they have played a couple of matches more. Moving into JCK Division 2, as I said at the top of the show, it's as you were at the top of the table with Paul Rose United and Castletown both having uh, pretty comfortable victories today. Castletown's more so, by the sounds of it. Definitely. Well, let's look at Castletown's first. I haven't got um, any goal scorers, so if either club can text us through, please. one six six one seven seven. Um But, yeah, comfortable in the end, 6-1 to Castletown. And uh, Paul Rose, that was 4-2 against Union Mills, and a hat-trick there. James McGinn, he's a really good player. I think James is about 19 or, or might even 18, 19. Uh, but he's a good player. He played for Corinthians under 18s and uh, uh, took note of his skills then. And uh, Mark Priestnell got the other one. Uh, it was 3 1 at half time for Union Mills. It was Luke Booth and Lee Christian with the second goal. Ramsey Youth Centre didn't play today. Their match was postponed. They started the day in third place. So Onken had the chance to uh, leapfrog. Uh, sorry, Foxdale had the chance to leapfrog at Ramsey Youth Centre. However, it wasn't to be. They went four, uh, went down 4-1 at Maloo. Yeah, I got a text through how Foxdale played, but I don't think we can say it on radio. It's a so we'll keep show. that one. They, yeah. they weren't very good anyway. And they were 2-0 down at half-time. Uh, Danny McLaughlin with two goals for Maloo. Uh, Kieran Kreipner with one and Dale Walker. Uh, Liam Cannon it was who got the goal for Foxdale in the second half. And the score was 4-1 to Maloo. Great result. Yeah, so Malou now uh, 24 points from 14 matches. Onken went ahead of Foxdale in the table. They now sit on uh, 28 points from 13 matches. That's after beating Douglas and District 3-1 away. Onken were 2-0 up at half-time. Chris Asbridge with their two. Graham Lyons, he must be back, I think, for the uh, Christmas period. I think Graham's um, uh, at university and I know he's a really good player. I think he came through St George's junior ranks. But uh, Daniel stewart Clegg. Uh, score for Douglas and District and a bit of a stat for you this is eighth goal in the last five games and uh, well done to him and also 17 uh, year old uh, Joe Kenyuk I think it is came on in the 75th minute to make his first team debut so hopefully Joel will stay in that first team and see if he can help D&D climb up that table well done and uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, done, well done to Daniel as well it's great form that eight and five for him moving into Canada life combination one we'll just take a quick look through these results now Russian have had a bit of a wobble uh, in the last couple of weeks they did have a 100% record they've drawn and they've lost in the last two games and they lost again today yeah I'll just go back on one we've missed one they'll oh, get sorry. shot Tony Sewell will be right on my door <laughs> knocking the door down it was uh, Jim's 4-3 uh, of course was, uh, how could I forget this one this exactly. sounded like a belter 1-1 uh, at half time I've actually got a bit of a match report on this one if I can <laughs> uh, get it up but uh, Callum Pete uh, scored one and also got sent off uh, when uh, Jim's were 2-1 down Steve Slack got one Daniel Cooley and uh, Ross Crawford I think uh, is it Ross that's uh, stepped in to help Tony uh, run the team but I'll see if I can Give it up because it was quite funny. Match report I got was uh, Jim's uh, first team four, air three, one one at half time. Air went three one up, scoring two penalties. Jim's down to ten men after uh, Callum Pete being sent off uh, for descent in the last uh, 30 minutes. Jim's battled and fought back to win four three uh, with goals, and we'll give the nicknames out because I think it's quite funny with goals from Ross, Cal, Slacky, and Cooley. So well done to Tony and the boys. Bullet header to win it. 
And uh, the place went mental by the sound of it, and a lot of smiley faces on there as well. <laughs> yeah, I think it was uh, their final two goals were in injury time as yeah. well, weren't they? They came yeah. right Again, at the end of the match. Great so result. Heck of a result. Yes, yeah, sorry for overlooking Don't that worry. one there. Uh, Canada Life Combination 1, Russian the leaders have uh, gone off a bit of a cliff in the last three weeks because they've lost again today to St John's. Yeah, it was a big uh, defeat for them, and they were trailing at half time 3 1. And I did touch on at lunchtime with you. Uh, I knew St John's combination was pretty strong today, but um, the boys who come in didn't score because the star today was Jamie Crook. He got a hat trick. Kieran Brock, who uh, to me was a standout player for for Laxey last year, Combi, and I don't know what it is with him. Uh, I've asked questions because he's gone to St John's. Is why isn't he given the opportunity in the first team? And from what I'm hearing, he's quite happy to play in the Combi. Listen, if you're that good, get yourself in that first team. Paul Whitehead got the other one. Paul only signed for St John's yesterday. He transferred from. Uh, Peel, so that's his first goal for his new club for Russian. Uh, Craig Gallen got one, and Andrew Moody got the other one. So as you say, big points dropped there for Russian, and a little bit of pressure building on them. Yeah, although second place Corinthians, who are seven points behind them and have three games in hand, couldn't capitalise because they went down three-two at Douglas Royal, and third place Old Boys, their match against Douglas Athletic was uh, postponed. So things staying pretty much as they were there. Um, also in this division, let's just quickly mention Peel 5, Laxey 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Kane with uh, two goals. He's over from Dubai at the moment. Nice uh, place to come back to him. Flo- flown in a ringer. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Lace uh, got one. Sam Gaunt, George Rawlinson, 3-0 to Peel at half-time. Johnny Palmer got the goal for Laxey. And just going back on that Corinthians Royal score, uh, Jack Ridings and uh, Carl Presley got the goals for Corinthians. Haven't got Royal scorers. And Colby 2, Ramsey 3. Yeah, Luke Roberts with uh, the two goals for Colby. Ramsey led at half-time, 2-1. But unfortunately, we haven't got Ramsey scorers. And moving into combination two, Ramsey Youth Centre, the leaders, they beat Michael United 3-1. And, uh, well, second place, Onken didn't play their match, was postponed. Third place, Castletown, there was a win for them, though. Yeah, for going back on Ramsey Youth Centre, they were 2-0 up at half-time. Uh, Dylan Parrish with two, Martin Murphy who also got a straight red in the game. Don't know what that was for. Uh, we haven't got Michael's goal scorer. Castletown 3, Governor's Athletic nil. No scorers for that one. Air 3, Jim's 1, no scorers for that one. And uh, the other big uh, sort of game I look at in combination 2 was Paul Rose 3, Union Mills 7. 5-2 at half-time for Paul Rose. Joe Canopy with 1, Jack Tow- Townsend, I think it is, got 2. Ryan Spibby got sent off for violent conduct, so he's going to miss a bit of football. Union Mill scorers Ben Evans with three, Lee Sum, uh, Kyle Stewart, I think it was, and Ashley Bovington down with the other one, and Lewis Kelly got a goal also for Union Mills. Damien Owen was the goal scorer for Michael United. Damien Owen, there you excellent, go. thank you. Just had a message in from uh, St Mary's here to say uh, best wishes to uh, Joey Morling as Definitely. well, I'd say, after 100%. that serious injury.